Mate from Nicaragua, John Early here. Um, in one of my favorite places, this is the Momentum Collective Artist Residency. And it's a place where people come to share creative ideas, creative movement, um, teach each other, um, get inspired. And that's what I want to talk about today is inspiration and creativity. It's that million dollar question of how can I find inspiration and creativity on a day-to-day -day basis and keep myself moving with that momentum forward. And um, I think it made me start to think about it. And inspiration, it's, inspiration is born through creativity. You don't exactly get a brilliant creative idea and get uninspired and be like, all right, well, I'm going to just sit on the couch and eat a bag of chips instead. You, you want to act on it. You have that impulse to do something with it and, and, and tap into it before you lose that creative spark, that kind of flow. And a, a quote uh, by Leonard Cohen is a really cool thing that I think to, to approach it as is someone was asking him, where do you find all of your inspiration? He's written thousands and thousands of songs and poems and he's like, well, if I knew where to find inspiration, I would go visit their way more often. And I think that's just it. Where does inspiration exist? Where does this creative capital exist? I think we've all had those creative ideas and moments where you tap into something and it's that source seems to be this infinite source. It's like there's always all these ideas floating around there and you happen to tap into it and that the solution or that creative idea was like it was always there. You just had to find it. And I was reading a book by Lee Coit. It was called Being, How to Increase Your Awareness of Oneness. And he talked about creativity a lot and being really present and being really aware in that moment. And he says, creativity is often the best way, particularly in the beginning, to experience beingness. Now he says beingness, to get to that, you to reach that being state, you have to let go of personal effort and perceived needs to become present in the moment and in the creative idea. And this is what I, what I really dig here. He says, creative ideas occur when human thinking and efforts are suspended. And that made me thinking, you know, those efforts are suspended. That's a brilliant way to put it. Um, because creative, creativity and inspiration are linked and likely exist in the same realm as dreams. And they can j disappear just as fast. You know, the, the, when you wake up from a dream, the more you try and remember, the more you try and analyze and describe, um, or define what it was, the more it often unravels and can be lost forever. And I feel like it's the same thing. You can't force remembering a dream. You can't force creativity. You can't force inspiration on people. Um, so if dreams, imagination, creative inspiration exist where words don't exist, using them will only take you further from the source. So I find the same way, to, best way to recall, to tap into creative flow and inspiration and tap into remembering a dream. It's it's the same kind of thing. For those dreams, it's best to kind of slowly stay in that moment, close your eyes, and just let it kind of reformulate into what it, what it was and what it still can be. Instead of trying to overanalyze and question it and let it sit and let it sit and simmer and to where it still might go. It's kind of like you have that creative spark. You don't want to start just shoveling a bunch of wood on top of it and you'll, you'll burn it out. You want to kind of build it slowly and kind of see where it can go. Give it some time and space to fully formulate before you start analyzing it, throwing things on it, and, and questioning it, or just adding, adding too much into it. And I was thinking, you got, yeah, once stuck and, and fully formatted, then you, can, then you can approach it from a rational, creative perspective. Bring it from this ethereal perspective into the reality, and then you can start a, applying different perspectives to it, questioning it. But otherwise, you want to treat it like, or let's say, like writing music sometimes the same with me. It's, if you're writing a song, if you've got this melody in your head, you want to see where that melody might go, where it can take you. you want to, if you've got these lyrics that are popping into places, kind of just go with it. Even if for parts in between, they're not really words, you want to go with it. If you run, get that idea, you run and try and find a pen and paper and you're scrambling, I don't want to lose this, sometimes you might have lost that song or that idea. First let it just see and get that melody going, sing it a few times and see where it might go before you start really uh, writing it down or kind of questioning it. And it's kind of like the same, same approach to improv, improvisation, the whole concept of improvisation is yes and. You're saying yes, you're agreeing to something, but then yes and. What can you add to it? Where can where can this where this might where can this might go? Where where can you take this? And you kind of approach like an eternal optimist. Actually thinking about it, creativity, you don't really have people negative people that are very creative. It's always the the positive people that are creative because they're more open to those ideas. They're not too um, close-minded or dismissive of ideas, so I think that's a funny thing to, to throw in there. But going back to Lee Coit's um, book, Being, and his, and his part here of the creative aspects of being, 
He has, creative ideas occur when human thinking and efforts are suspended. Creativity is an act of discovery, not really a creation of something, but finding something. Creativity is not a mental process, not an act of thinking about a problem and finding a solution. It's caused by flashes of recognition when the mind is open and willing to see a new relationship. I think that's the key, new relationship. Often feels like it was always there. So you're tapping into these new ways of seeing things, new ways of tapping into to seeing a, 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 a problem or, or just an idea from a different perspective, those aha moments. And Dave Foley um, is a writer from, from Kids in the Hall, and he was writing for uh, news radio back in the day. And he had an interesting approach to that, too, to get that, that suspension of, of, of analyzation of human thinking. He would get his writing team to start at 2 in the morning, and then go until 8 in the morning. The day before, they had to submit their screenplay. Because he found that's when human thinking was suspended. You get those silly ideas coming out. You get people saying yes to things because they're either they're overtired or they're whatever. And that might not work for everyone. But I think that's also interesting because um, when that human thinking is suspended, the top three places and times that people get their most creative ideas is when you're in the shower, when you're driving to work, and right before you're about to go to sleep. And I find that really interesting because you're not, you know, you have a bit of routine, you kind of have this mode, but you're still open to different things coming in. And you're kind of away from distractions. You don't have your phone in the shower. You don't have your phone when you're driving to work. But you can still have this open mind of where things where things might go. So that's when those ideas start popping into place, and um, that's actually where I wrote a lot of this book, Tales of the Modern Nomad. I wrote this book basically right before I'd go to sleep. I'd try and go to sleep, and of course, whenever you want to try and go to sleep, then you get all these ideas or these different things. And now these ideas for an article or a story or just a concept would kind of float into my head, and just go, all right, where, where can this go? And then see where it would go, would kind of formulate, and then once it would kind of formulate, the whole idea was kind of exhausted and it had its thing. Then I'd either try and write it down quick, or I'd try and put it down into, into paper so I wouldn't forget it. But um, you never really know where those ideas might flash into. And Tom Waits has an amazing little story about that too. He was driving down the freeway, and then he's busy in the middle of rush hour traffic, and then he suddenly gets this melody in his head, and this, this flash of brilliance and this creative thing starts firing off. And he starts getting really upset. He's like, oh, crap, I don't have a means to write this down. And, and I'm going to lose this idea, and I don't want to lose this. And then he suddenly gets really upset. He kind of slows down. He goes, you know, curses this guy. I'm like, what? Why, why are you coming to give me this insight and the creative flashes right now? Like, I'm not, can you see I'm busy? Like, I'm in the studio six hours a day. You know where I'm going to be. So come back another time when I'm able to use you. Otherwise, go bother someone else. Go bother Leonard, Leonard Cohen or something like that. So I think that's exactly it. You get frustrated. But... You still never know when those creative ideas are going to come flashing into your head. But I want, I want to close with the Tom Waits quote here, actually. Anything you absorb will ultimately secrete. It's inevitable. Most of us are an original painting, and it's a mystery to us what is learned and what is borrowed, what is stolen and what is born, what you came with and what you found while you were here. So I guess stay open to when and where those creative flashes might come shooting into your head um, and soak up the inspiration that will follow them often best chase with a nice cup of mate. So here's some, some thinking for today, your morning mate with John Early, and I give you guys a big cheers, and hasta la próxima, and uh, much love here from the Momentum Collective Artist Residency in Nicaragua.